Why just create letterpress when you can do more? So stick around. There are two techniques I'm going to be sharing with you. Other than using your press plates for the letterpress look, you can also blind letterpress and hot foil. And I'm going to walk you through both techniques today. Using this beautiful rustic burlap press plate from Altenew, this is actually a background plate, so it is quite large. And I do need to do a little bit of quick stamping, and you'll see why in a moment. I've got a piece of the porcelain cardstock here. It's A2 size and I'm stamping on it. It is almost like stamping on a watercolor piece of cardstock. So having a stamp positioning tool is your friend here because you can re-stamp if you need to. And I'm stamping out a few leaves and using the packaging to help me position them. This is going to be the panel for the blind letterpress. And what that simply means is that we are going to have the impression or the debossed kind of look, but we're not going to be using any ink. So blind letterpress is the same, basically exactly the same as letterpress, but you're not adding the ink. Because this panel is a full card size, I don't want the tape to sort of stop the impression going onto the cardstock. So I do roll the low tack tape and place it on the platen and line up my press plate in the exact position where it's going to sit perfectly with that panel, just using the registration marks that are on both the chase and on the platen. It's really easy to do. The only thing that's different here is that I haven't actually added any ink to the press plate before I've rolled it through. Although I did add ink to the background panel before I rolled it through, but what that's going to give me is this amazing textured result on both the leaf images that I've stamped and on the whole background panel. I think it looks fabulous. So the second technique we're going to be doing here today is the hot foil. You can use your press plates to hot foil with, and I always do a little test piece first to make sure that I've got my sandwich right. I've got a go press and foil. I've heated the platform up as well as the press plate. I've got the brushed gold mirror foil and I've put the pretty side facing the plate and then I've got my cardstock on top of that. And for my machine, I use two shims of cardstock. This is 110 pound cardstock, so it is quite thick. And I let it sit cooking <laughs> for two minutes. So after that two minutes is up, I just take the whole plate out of the go press and foil and roll it through my die cutting machine. I do go fairly slowly just to give the hot foil time to transfer from the release paper onto the cardstock. And before I remove the hot foil, I make sure that I allow a few seconds for it to cool down. And it's so pretty and shiny. And don't throw away the scraps. <laughs> you can use those on another project or you can use them to do your testing like I did today. You can see an impression on this cardstock, but it's definitely not as deep an impression as you get with the letterpress look. Now I am going to turn these backgrounds into cards, but I want to talk a little bit more about using your better press. When you're doing something like blind letterpress, it doesn't have to be a whole background. Have a look at what images or sentiments that you have. You can certainly do exactly the same thing with any of those. You can also blend the cardstock before you actually run it through the machine. You can blend it after. You can also swipe ink across the top to get a uh, a really fun textured look and if you have like say a gold ink pad like the antique gold that will look really pretty swiped over the top For and of course if you have any questions about which colors I'm using they will be listed at the blog and also in the description in the video link below 
and I wanted to make this into an anniversary card. It could also be used for a birthday. So I thought some gold highlights would be really nice. So I did some gold heat embossing and die cut this out with one of the featured sentiments dies. I just think gold adds such elegance to a card design. So now it's time to assemble the card. I've added some half inch ultra sticky tape to the back of the panel and I'm releasing the opposite corners. Now I can just put some pressure onto the non-adhesive corners until I'm happy with how it's all lined up. And then once it's all nice and straight, I can put pressure on the adhesive corners. And that way it's gonna hold it in place while I remove the release paper from the um, ultra sticky tape. This is just one great way of making sure that your panels are nice and straight before you commit. <laughs> And of course I've added dimension to both the floral bouquet and also the sentiment. I like to hang things off the edge of the card so when I do that after it's adhered down I can just flip it over and cut away the excess image. And I did consider actually swiping some gold ink across the background on this card but I just like white space and I really like this antique gold ink spray from Alta New, so that one today. <laughs> I, didn't, I did add the sentiment after I'd done the splatter because it's much easier that way and protected the center of the flowers as well. So blind letterpress is such a subtle fun way to add something special to your projects. Okay, I want to use my hot foil panel now and make another card. I've colored another eclectic bouquet, but this time I've done it in some analogous colors. I've just temporarily adhered that to the largest half tone heart die cut. And I wasn't actually thinking ahead here. I could have die cut this out, but I'd already doubled it up with a second piece of cardstock. And I just didn't trust myself to run it through my die cutting machine with the cardstock being so thick. So it was just as easy to cut it away with my scissors. I'm doing an embossed sentiment again. This one's from the Rosa Gallica set. It's a builder garden set and it's got some really cool sentiments in it. And I'd already embossed and die cut the word happy and then added anniversary. I've popped up the bouquet on top of my heart and then I actually popped up my heart as well on top of the card. <laughs> so there's a lot of dimension in this card here. I did add some metallic gems to both of the cards. These are really pretty. I like how they kind of shimmer in the light i got to say my favorite out of all of them so far would have to be the iridescent one, but I am using these metallic ones a lot. <laughs> They're really pretty. I just hope they bring out some more colors soon. And let's see both techniques. Here is the press plate used as a hot foil background and the blind leather press look, which gives a much more sort of subtle background effect it's really pretty so let me know in the description below which one's your favorite today and if you're going to give this technique a try till next time happy paper crafting bye Hello there, did that video just spark your creativity? And do you want more project ideas and inspiration videos too? Well, if you do, please make sure that you subscribe to the Alta New YouTube channel. Also, make sure that you do click that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Thanks so much for watching, bye-bye.